Once again, this is a Mantra Monday free Instagram live watercolor tutorial. <clears throat> and the mantra that we're going to look at for this week is I believe in myself. And you're going to paint a little bee. So this was a, a, an idea and a recommendation from my niece. Her name is Allie. She also likes to take these classes on Mondays. And we were sitting together on Mother's Day talking about the classes. And she suggested that I paint a bee. And the cute quote of I believe in myself. Um, the B actually comes from, <clears throat> it's the exact same B that I did almost over a year ago. Um, I did, I painted this B. And so I want to paint it again here on Instagram Live in a slightly easier beginner's version um, to teach you all how to first draw and then paint a cute little B in watercolor. So the supplies, I'm going to start with the supplies. Um, you will need a piece of watercolor paper if you are using watercolors. I am using a 5 by 7 sheet of paper. My paper is a hot pressed, meaning that it is a softer paper. It's not as rough as a, a cold pressed. You can use whatever uh, type of paper you prefer, though. Cold pressed will work just fine. <clears throat> you will need a pencil and an eraser because that will sketch it out first. Um, <clears throat> you will need watercolors, of course, unless you decide to do this with markers or acrylics or oils. The colors that we're going to use today, I'm using a, uh, this color is called New Gamboge by uh, Daniel Smith. It is more of an orangish uh, yellow mixed with a new Hansa yellow, which is a little bit of a cooler greenish tone yellow. We, you can mix your yellow depending on whatever yellow your class, you, you have. <clears throat> then um, we'll, you'll need a black. So I am using a Lunar Black by Daniel Smith. And I noticed there's a quick question. So Somebody's wondering if all the classes are on Monday at this time. Yes, they are. They're always Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, if this is the first time that you're joining, welcome. These classes will also be um, recorded and then uploaded onto my, um, onto my post, onto my Instagram, um, so that you can refer back to them later if you can't stay tonight. So don't worry if you can't stay for the live part. It will be uploaded afterwards. So back to some colors. So yellow, lunar black. Um, I did use a little tiny bit of moon glow in here. <clears throat> I'll show you how to mix that if you do not have that. And then also I'm using a quinacridone magenta for the little hearts. And that's it. Not too many colors today. <clears throat> I also am using a Micron uh, size 03 pen for the lettering. And also I did add a little bit of pen detail on the wings. It's a little bit easier to see or to draw the details on the wings instead of paint them. For the brush that I'm using tonight, I'm using a Silver Limited Black Velvet Round Size 6. It's the brush that I use for literally every single painting that I do. If you're interested in <clears throat> where to find these brushes, I do have links on my website. The link is in my bio. And you will be um, taken to either Amazon, my Amazon front store, or Blick Art Store to see um, if you can get your own. So that's what you will need tonight. Of course, you'll need water. You also will need a towel or a paper towel, something to... Um, clean your brush to be able to lift up liquid and color. Other than that, that is it. So <clears throat> let's get started. I'm going to move this to the side. 
And I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. We're gonna start, of course, with sketching our mantra out. And as always, we're going to start with our lines. So if you have a straight edge or an extra sheet of paper or a ruler, we're going to draw two lines, and I'm gonna actually have my lines up a little bit further than normal, just because our B doesn't take up too much space. So I'm gonna come up a little bit from the bottom. I'm gonna actually do this upside down so I know my lines are straight. So I'll do one line on the bottom, come up a little bit in the second line. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to write my words so that I've, I know I have enough space for my words. So I'm going to write I believe, and of course B being B-E-E. -E. I'm gonna make these in capital letters just to kind of accent them a little bit more. And believe is always a tricky word for me to spell. It's I before E, except after C, and there's no C, so it's I first. I believe you can write in me, you can write in myself. I don't know which is grammatically correct. I just wrote I believe in myself. Hopefully I'm not telling you all something that's grammatically incorrect. Maybe if anybody knows if it should be I believe in me, write it now in the comments. I definitely don't want to tell you something that's wrong, but I'm going to write, I believe in myself. So once we have our words here, now we can start with our sketch. I'm going to start by sketching out some shapes. So the first shape that I'm going to sketch is the body of the bee. So I'm going to be first sketching this oval shape here, and then I'm going to chunk it into the head the the abdomen and the thorax so we'll start with our oval my oval if i'm looking at my fingers is going to be maybe like three thumbs long so that you have an idea at home about how big it's going to be i do want it to be in the center i'll sketch it out remember when we're sketching we're not really pressing down too hard with our pencil I want it about this shape. Once I have this shape, now I'm going to chunk it into sections. And this is another thing that I hope I'm not teaching you incorrectly. I used to teach this as a third grade teacher, um, the head, the, the thorax and the abdomen. I'm just, I don't remember which is the thorax and which is the abdomen anymore, but there are about three pieces to this B. So I'm going to start with this middle part. I want to say it's the thorax. Once again, if anybody knows what's correct, let me know. So I'm going to chunk it into sections. Here's This is where this black piece is going to be, the center. Then this bottom piece, I'm going to break it where this yellow and black come together. And it actually, in the picture that I was using, it kind of came up slightly in this like little V up and back down. If that looks good to you, you can keep it like that. If you wanna make it straight, straight, that's okay. And then at the very bottom of our B, we do have a little section that is still white and yellow. So I have these sections that are color-coded. At the very top, I have this little section of yellow. And I have the head. So I am going to make the head a little bit more pronounced from my oval shape. I'll hold it up so that you can see. So you noticed how I curved these edges here so that the head is a little bit more pronounced. It's okay that your lines are this dark. I'll show you a trick to erase some of those lines. Now that we have the basic body shape, I'm gonna do the wings first, and then I'm gonna look at the legs. 
So my wings are going to come out of this biggest um, center black shape. That's either the thorax or the abdomen. Um, and I'm going to have it come out towards further towards the top here. I do want to have a, a line that's slightly diangled upwards. So if I have my pencil at completely perpendicular, it's going to be diagonaled slightly up for the wing. And I want to try my best to mimic both wings on either side. So I'm going to have this diagonal coming up to the right. I'll round it out. Come back in, come down for this little bottom loop, and then back to the center. When I come back to the center, it's going to be diagonaled upwards. So there's the shape of my first wing. I'm going to try to do mirror that shape on the opposite side. So I'm going to come, I'm going to use my pencil, come over. Start about here. I'm going to diagonal upwards and out. And I want to try my best to have it be about the same length of wing. I'm going to round the tip, come back in, slightly out again, and diagonal up. If you need to erase and try it over again, that's okay. My two wings are not 100% symmetrical and that's okay too. If you do have your eraser handy, you can erase this inner, um, the, the line of the body that cuts through the wing. We don't need that. And now that I have my wing shape, now I can sketch out where about the legs are going to go. I don't need to draw an outline on the legs. I just want to draw a stick that's coming out of where they should be exiting the body. So I have two legs on the upper part of this thorax slash abdomen, whatever <laughs> this section is. And I have two legs coming out on each side at the bottom under the wings. So <clears throat> these legs are coming basically where I have this black chunk and my yellow chunk coming out of the body. And if you can tell, there's two segments. I'm just going to draw a straight line up, though. So I'm going to come out and about where this connection here is I'm going to just angle it a little bit more to the to the top I want it about this long I don't want it too much longer and once again I'm going to mirror it on the other side angling it out diagonal a little bit more up and I want it stopping about the same height here while we're up here, let's do the two antennas right away. So it's going to come out of the center of the head. And we're going to angle out and angle out. Same thing. We're going to kind of mirror it. You will have a little ball at the end of your antenna, but we can add that with paint. Once we're done with the antenna, now let's draw the, the legs here. We'll start with the one leg that is closest to the wing. We're going to diagonal down. And same thing, we're gonna kinda chunk it where I know this isn't the knee, I know that's the incorrect, but there's two different segments here on the leg. We're gonna angle it and bend it at that segment. And the second leg, we're gonna do the same thing. Diagonal down and then a more extreme diagonal where this is segmented. And we'll try to do the same over here. Once again, we're just drawing lines because we're going to fill in the leg with paint, so we don't need it very detailed. 
We just want to understand lengths here. How long do these legs need to be? And the angles that they're, they're at. So I think that looks pretty good. At home, take a minute to finish your sketch. Erase it if you need to, make any corrections. A little trick here, if you're done sketching and you're ready for paint, when we're sketching on watercolor paper, sometimes our pencil lines get a little too heavy. A lot of artists will try to avoid this by doing a sketch on a piece of paper first and then tracing onto their watercolor paper. Since we're sketching directly on our watercolor paper, we can take some of that graphite off by using our kneaded eraser and rolling it into a rolling pin, <clears throat> excuse me, a rolling pin, setting it down and pressing back and forth like a rolling pin on top of your drawing and that'll lift some of that graphite up. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I want you to see these lines here. So I'm going to leave it as it is. But at home, you might want to roll this out to pick up some of the graphite. All right, now that we're all set for paint, I'm going to leave this here so you can see the colors that we need to mix. But I will show you on my palette what we'll need to mix. So you have your water. I always like to start by adding water first to my palette because the first few layers of color that we want to put down are always going to be slightly more transparent, meaning we need more water. I'm going to start with this new gamboge. I think I'm saying that right. I might not be. I do have, this is, this is also fairly transparent. You can tell because if I were to take a piece of test paper, it's going to look like this. Um, I do like this as a color. If you have, uh, if your only yellow that you have at home is uh, this yellow that's a little bit more of a green tone of a yellow, you can make this a little bit um, more of a reddish tone by adding just just a hint of either red here, just a touch of it, or you can also do the same thing by adding a little bit of orange, whatever color you have. I know it's slightly different, but in the long scheme of things, when you paint your bee, it's not going to look too, too different. You can also, you're more than welcome to keep this very bright, vibrant um, lemon yellow. It's just going to look slightly different than what I have here. So we have our yellow set. Um, I know most of the rest of ours is a uh, black. So I'm going to get some of my more trans translucent, transparent black by adding some water. And then I'm using a lunar black. Whatever black you have in your, uh, in your palette will work. The reason I like lunar black, and you can see it pretty well here, is because it's a granulating color. That means that your pigment is actually going to start to separate. So if, if it looks to you like there's some little dots of color, that's because there are. The pigments start to separate once you add water. I personally like how that looks. There's some people that don't like how that looks. If you do not have a black at home, you can mix black by having um, a lot of artists like to mix indigo, which is a dark blue. And you can mix dark blue indigo with a sepia, which is a dark brown. And it pretty much makes black. Isn't that interesting? Indigo and sepia will also make a black. So whatever you choose to do, however you want to mix your black, just make sure that you have one black that's more transparent, that has more water, and then you will be using some black directly from your well. 
um, because you will need to drop in some, some more concentrated pigment. <clears throat> the last color that I will use because I'm a big fan of it is called Moon Glow. That's also a color by Daniel Smith. It's also a granulated color. And I'm going to be using just a touch of Moon Glow on the wings because although the wings are transparent, we obviously don't want to leave them white or otherwise you won't be able to tell that they're wings. So I'm using a little bit of Moon Glow. If you don't have Moon Glow at home, you can mix a little bit of Moon Glow. I would mix it by adding a little bit of indigo. Moon Glow is basically a mix of a little bit of indigo, a little bit of purple, a very, very little bit of purple mixed together, and maybe, maybe a touch, touch of sepia to make it slightly black. So this is, like I said, indigo with a touch of purple and a touch of black, and it makes this gray color, but it, that the gray is more of like a bluish gray. Obviously, Moon Glow is a pigmented, um, sorry, a granulated color, so some of the pigments will start to separate as it dries. But as you can see, it's fairly close if we mix our own. All right, so that's it. We'll, we'll just need a little touch of magenta for the heart, but we'll mix that later. So let's get started. Let me move these things around one more time. All right, so we're, we want to be kind of strategic with what we paint first because we do want our colors to be able to dry in time. So I do want to start with my yellows. Usually in watercolor, you do want to start with your lightest colors that are the that you want to keep the brightest first. Um, it's always easier to add stuff on top. Of course, it's harder to take it off. So I'm going to go back to this yellow that I just mixed up, this kind of honey yellow. And I want to make sure that I have the right segment of my bee, but this segment underneath the wings, I'm going to paint a wet on dry technique. I have wet paper. I'm painting on, uh, I'm sorry, a wet brush painting on dry paper. And I'm going to just drop and touch a little bit more color to this left side. And I do want to add a highlight to this right. So I'm going to dry my brush. And I'm going to lift some of that color from this right side. And it's going to make an automatic highlight there. Then I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to do the same thing for this section here, just above the biggest black spot. I'm going to paint my yellow, drop it more on this left side, dry off my brush, and lift a little on the right. All I'm doing is I'm wanting to give this the illusion that the the B is actually 3D, and so having a highlight on one side is going to help me do that. Also, I apologize for <laughs> my fingers and my manicure here. I didn't have time to fix it, but such is life. Down at the bottom here, I'm also going to add just a little hint of yellow at the bottom. So I'm only going to do yellow at this top here and I'm going to once again dry my brush and take lift some of that pigment off from this right side. Now that we have the yellow, the second lightest area is the wings. So you're going to clean your brush. For the wings, I actually want to be painting a... Um, a very, very, very transparent, lots of water with that moon glow. So if you have moon glow, you're going to use a very, very transparent amount. That means lots of water. Or, so this is my moon glow. As you can see, it has lots of water in it. It's more water than, than pigment. If you do not have moon glow, 
like I said, a mixture of a little bit of indigo, a little bit of purple, and a touch, a very, very small touch of brown. And so you have this like bluish gray color. Like I said, quite a bit of water. We're gonna take that, we're going to paint a light layer just to create this shadow and we wanna keep it very wet. So I, I don't want it to dry yet because I'm going to drop in some color. I have lots of liquid on my brush. It is slightly pooling. That's okay. I want it to because I want to keep this space wet so that I can drop color in. I'll lift it up so you can see. It is quite wet right now. You can see the reflection. I, you can see the, the liquid actually moving up and down the paper. If you don't, if you can't see that at home on yours, it means you don't have enough liquid there. Add some more. Then I'm going to completely dry off my brush. And what I want to do to create this little ring of yellow here, do you see it's like this little highlight of yellow around the outside? I want to take my new gamboge directly from the well. It has to be concentrated because I am going into an area of less concentration. So I cannot have water on my brush and add more. Otherwise, it'll just mix. I need to have a very strong concentration of pigment. So directly from the well. And now I'm going to just very gently Pull this yellow, and it's okay if it starts to seep forward. I'm going to pull just this yellow along the outside here and along the bottom. I don't need it to be on the top, though. That's okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this other side while it's wet. Now, it has to be wet for this to happen. If it's not wet, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a very thick line of yellow. I do want it to start to seep in. Now, I want to have a way to push this yellow back to the outside. So before I drop in some water, I'm going to go back to my Moon Glow. And I'm gonna take some Moon Glow directly from the well so it's more concentrated. And I'm going to just touch a little bit of moon glow here where the wings are connecting. I want it to be just a little bit darker. If you don't have moon glow already mixed up, you can always use a black. Now I'm going to add water to this because I want the water to push everything to the outside. So I'm gonna add water and drops of water to the center of these wings. And when I add the drops of water to the center, it's gonna push this yellow to the outside. It's also gonna help this moon glow mix. And I'm gonna use my brush now, I'm gonna dry it, and I'm gonna use it to blend a little bit. So if I have areas here where the yellow is creeping up too far, I'm going to take some of that pigment away lift it up a little bit as long as your paper is wet you actually are able to really manipulate these colors quite quite a lot as soon as it starts to dry you lose that ability to manipulate the colors so add a little bit more water here then I'll dry it and I'll lift it up because there's just a little too much yellow on this side for me. Once you have it looking the way that you want it, once it's blended out to your liking, then we'll want to stop and let it dry. So do you see how my moon glow, you can see the separation now of colors where there's a, there's a very clear 
purple and then there's some blues starting in there too. All right, so now I want to let that dry. So I'm gonna move on. Now I have, you notice how I have this hard line here? Before I add anything on top, I think I just wanna scrub that hard line out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my brush. This section is already completely dry, so you notice I don't have any shine or sheen on it. And with a wet brush, I'm just going to kinda of come in and kinda of scrub out that hard line. I just don't want that hard line there. There. All right, now that we're done with this first coat of yellow and the first coat on the wings, now I'm gonna start with my black. So I don't want to touch anywhere around the wings if I add black here towards the wings, it's going to start to pull into this wet area. But all of my yellows, minus what I just touched up, are dry. So I can start on this section down here, and I can start on the head, and I can start on all the legs. So I'm going to be using my uh, lunar black that I mixed with water. So it's not a very, very dense black. This is about how much pigment I have on the black versus if I take my black directly from the well, this is how dark it looks. So I do have quite a bit of water added. It's always best when you're starting out, sorry, to add a little bit more water. All right, now for the body of this bee, I'm gonna start at the bottom here. And all I'm going to do is I'm, instead of painting um, smooth paint strokes, I'm actually going to be dotting this whole time. So I'm just going to be dotting here. It's going to make it look a little bit more fuzzy. Dot, dot, dot. If you have any white that's shining through, that's okay. I'm just going to dot. I've got quite a bit of liquid on my brush. So I'm not dotting dry pigment. Once I've dotted the whole section, now I'm going to take some more dense pigment directly from my well. I want it to be darker and I want some to drop in some darker pigment only on this left side. Then I'm going to clean my brush, dry it, and then I want to pick up some of this pigment, lift it up from this highlight here. I'll show you what it looks like. So once again, I did this stippling here. I dropped in darker pigment on the left side because we want this shadow on the left, it's going to be a little bit darker, dried my brush, and I lifted from this right side. We're lifting from the right side of every segment to create this 3D effect. If it dries a little bit too light, we can always come back and add more black. All right, now we're going to do the same thing for the head. So same thing, same technique. I'm gonna come in dot, dot, dot. Now, if your dots are looking a little bit off, instead of having where you're dotting vertically like this, try dotting where the edge of your brush is dotting down. That way you get a little bit bigger of a dot. We don't want the edges to be very clean. If they're very clean, it's gonna look like, it won't look like a fuzzy, B. That's all dotted. Oops, I forgot. Once again, I'm going to add the darker pigment directly from the well. My brush is still a little wet. That's how I can pull it directly from the well. Drop it in on this left side. Clean my brush. Dry it off. And then I'm going to just lift a little bit from this right. All 
All right, now I need to check on these wings. The wings are still wet, so I don't want to do this this um, inner segment yet because if I do and I touch the wings, the black is going to ruin the wings. So I'm going to work on the legs first. I do need to mix up a little bit more black with water. All right, now these wing, uh, the legs. So the first sec segment, basically I have three segments in these legs. I have the first segment that's connected to the body. There's a slight bend. Then you've got the second segment. And then I've been painting just these two little prongs. They're almost like pinchers. I know they're not pinchers, but it's like the legs of the bee. If it looks good to you, you can do the same thing. I'm going to do the same exact technique that I did with the body, this dotting technique. So I'm going to dot the legs. I want this section of the leg to be a little bit thicker where it connects to the body and thinner as we come out. Then where the bend connects, I'm going to... I actually left a slight little opening there. You can connect them. You don't have to. And then still more dotting until you get to the end. And then I'm going to do one, two. So once again, I'll show you on this side as well. We'll do it again. Where the leg connects to the body, I have it a little bit thicker. We are dotting the color onto the paper so it looks fuzzy. Where we have these two sections connect at the elbow, if you will, we're going to make it a little thicker again and then thin. And one, two. I'm going to just clean it up a little bit. Once those two legs are done, same thing. I'm going to grab some black directly from the well so it's a little bit more concentrated. And drop it in the closest to the body. We always want that section that's closest to the body to be a little bit more dark. So we're using, for this color, I'm using the Lunar Black from Daniel Smith. But like I said, you can create your own black by using, um, I like to use indigo, which is a dark blue, and sepia, a dark um, brown. My wings still are, they're, they're, if you noticed, my wings aren't shiny anymore. That means that they're starting to get dry. But just to be safe, I'm going to do these other legs at the bottom first. So same technique, I'm going to dot, 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 and make the leg, the part that's connected to the body is going to be a little thicker, so it almost looks like a drumstick. Then at this connection, I'm going to do this second segment, same thing, a little thicker, and then thinner, one, two. I'm going to do two, two legs at once and then drop in some darker black. Same thing. I'm going to use a stippling technique, fancy word for dotting. Dot, 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 till I get to that second segment. Thicker at the body where it connects. Thinner as we come out. Then I might leave just a tiny, tiny, tiny section of white. And I'm going to start on the second segment. Dot, dot, dot. And one, two. Two little legs coming out. Now that I have those legs, I'm going to grab some black directly from my well. So it's more concentrated. And I'm going to drop in some of that denser, more concentrated black where the legs connect to the body. And same thing on this side. I'm going to dot, dot, oh, I have too much liquid on my brush. 
Sometimes you can tell very, very easily if you have too much liquid on your brush, especially when you're dotting. I'm going to be thicker towards the body and it's thinner as we come out. Once you get to this segment where they're connected, I might leave a tiny white space, dot, 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 and one, two. Remember that these legs are not perfect. They're not straight lines. We don't want them to be. Otherwise, they won't look like hairy legs that can collect all kinds of pollen. Dot, dot, dot. Thicker towards the body. Thinner as we come out. Dot, dot, dot. And one, two. I'm going to take black directly from the well so it's more concentrated and drop darker pigment towards the body. And now my wings are totally dry. So now I'm able to come back and do the center of the body. I'm going to do the same exact thing. It's a lot of repetition here on these segments. I'm going to dot all over here. Now this is still, I have a lot of liquid on my brush. I need a lot of liquid. If I don't have a lot of liquid, my dots are going to start to dry and it'll look like your bee is polka dot. We don't want it to look polka dot, we just want it to look fuzzy. So I do have to have a lot of liquid here. So I'm going around the wings. I'm not dotting over the wings. Now before it dries, remember that we want to have this edge be a little bit darker. So I'm going to take some black, once again directly from the well want it more concentrated and I'm going to drop more concentrated black on this left side and also along this bottom here and along the top. So I just want to leave this little section here a little bit lighter. I am still dropping the color in, meaning that I'm touching the paper and the pigment is just coming off of my brush and transferring to the, the um, wet paper. Now mine, I, it looks like there's a highlight already there. If yours does not look like that, you can clean your brush, dry it off, and then lift some of that pigment to create the highlight. I'll give you a second just to catch up. All right, now that we're done with our base coat, oh, we forgot the, the antenna. So let's go back with our black, the same paint we've always been using. Instead of dotting, I'm just going to draw a line coming out. It's, it's too thin to do a dot, but I am going to do a dot at the end of the antenna. So I'm just painting a thin line and a dot at the end. If the antenna is a little too thin for you to paint, you are more than welcome to wait until it's dry and use your micron pen for the antenna. But this is also a good way for you to practice brush control. Remember that if you want a thin line, you don't want to press down with your brush. You want to barely be touching the paper, resting your hand on the table, barely touching the paper, and as smooth of a motion as you can get it. That's how you're gonna create your thin lines. All right, so now that we're done with that, um, now I wanna go back to these yellows and I do want to add a 
second layer of yellow. So if you notice, there's a, a second layer of yellow here, and then there's a black shadow on top. So I'm gonna add the second layer of yellow first. I'm gonna use the same color that I mixed up before, um, which I didn't actually mix the color when I didn't clean my brush off well enough. Let me redo that. I had some black on my brush. So um, my color here was this new gamboge. I still have some water though. I'm, I'm diluting it with some water. I don't want it to be fully concentrated. And I'm going to just have a second layer here, but only on this left-hand side. So I'm going to still completely go from left to right on the top here, come down just slightly, and come over to maybe the center on the left hand side here. But I'm, I'm only going to do it that, um, um, that way. I'm going to leave this highlight here. Same thing at the bottom. I'm just going to do one more line where the black and the yellow connect and the same at the top here. I'm only going to focus on this left hand side. All right, now that we have our second layer of yellow, now we're going to let that dry. Um, I do want to add, well, let's wait for a second there. I do want to add um, a little heart here while the rest of this is drying. So my little hearts, if you've joined me before, the little hearts in my design um, are to remind me that throughout my week that my family and friends are always helping me um, and are always there for me. So whenever I see this little heart, I always think of my family and friends. So um, I'm going to mix up my dusty magenta. Remember that the I'm using quinacridone magenta, so I'm going to grab some quinacridone magenta here. And to dusty it up, I'm going to add a little bit of brown. So the brush that I'm using is a uh, Silver Limited Black Velvet, round size six. Um, you can find information on where to find the brush and um, exactly the type and the size from my website. So the link is just in my, in my Instagram. Um, it is under the main page. There's a page that says supplies, so you can find it there. So now that I have that all mixed up i'm going to add my little heart here if that's something that you have enjoyed doing in my tutorials feel free if you don't want to that's okay too all right and then i think while i'm waiting for the rest of this bee to dry before i finish all the extra details i think i am going to do my micron pen so if you're at a point you're all caught up, feel free to also use your micron pen here at the bottom while we're waiting for things to dry. Once again, I'm using a micron. This is a size 03. You can use a, I've also used a 01, which is slightly smaller. The lower the number of these pens, the smaller the tip. I believe in myself. I like to remind myself with this mantra that just because I believe in myself, obviously I'm not I'm not denying that it's always going to be a lot of work, regardless of if I believe in myself or not, but believing in myself that I can do something just gives me the confidence and the motivation to keep trying even if I fail. So even if it doesn't work the first time, if I believe that I can do it, it's more likely that I'm going to continue and practice and 
eventually one day hopefully have success. So now that we let this dry for just a little bit longer, I do want to come in with some um, shadows. And for the shadows, this is the black that we had added some water to for the legs and the, the, the body. I'm going to add a little bit more water. I don't want it to be this dark. I want my shadow to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to add water to only one section. So do you see how this is a lot more transparent now? I'll show you on my spare piece of paper. This is about the transparency that I want the shadow. So this is black. I probably had some magenta still in my brush, so it's a little slight uh, red tinge to it. So with that very light um, wash, I'm going to come here and just add a little bit of a shadow to this left side. If it becomes too much, I'm going to dry my brush and blend these edges. And the same thing, I'm going to just add a little bit to this side. It's kind of a same technique where I'm kind of dotting it. I'm not really worrying about it being a, a flat wash here. And the same at the bottom here. I'm going to mimic this side here. Because if I do not have this line here, I'm not going to see the bottom of the B. And I'm going to do the same at the top. A little bit of a shadow here. The same thing at the top, a little bit of a shadow on this left side. I only want my shadow to extend about halfway. I don't really want the shadow to extend to this other side of my B. And then I'm just going to add the lightest shadow here in the inside of the wing. So what I did here, I did it very quickly, I know. I'll do it one more time. I have my brush that's more perpendicular to the paper, or more parallel to the paper than perpendicular. So I'm using the long side of my brush. And I'm touching first closest to the wing, and then just pulling out maybe twice, pulling out two or three times. And what that's going to do is it's just going to have this shadow closer to the body. Now I want to let that dry. If I need to work at all on the body of the bee, I might add just a little bit more black to that wash. And I might just clean up the black here, depending on how dark your black is. Maybe you want to have a little bit darker um, when we add the second layer on top. It definitely darkens, darkens it up. You'll have to just judge at home if you need to darken it up a little bit. Same with the legs. If the legs are looking a little too light, you can always come in with a little bit more paint, a second layer. Make sure to keep these highlights um, open. I'm not really doing any eyes here. Um, if I add any eyes, I feel like it looks a little bit too cartoonish. But if you would like to add eyes and you want it to look more cartoonish, you definitely can. Down here, I'm definitely going to add more black. It's a little bit um, light. And actually, I'm just going to add a little bit more black along this edge here. I want this to be a little bit more pronounced. Once again, remember that you can blend your color by drying off your brush and using a dry brush to smooth some of those rough edges. All right, I think that looks pretty good though. Now the last thing that I have done with my bee is I added a few details with this micron pen. 
If you can tell at home, I added a few details just outlining very, very lightly around the yellow, more the yellow of the bee. And it's not a single hard line. It's very rough. I do have some openings. So be cautious here. Don't press down an outline. Um, otherwise, it'll look very illustrative. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sketchy black line around this yellow here and around the bottom here just so that it's a little easier to see. And now I do want to add some of these wing lines. So I'm going to keep the, the example down here. Basically, I want to have three lines coming from the center here. And a few of these are going to be arced up and a few arced down. This, this is one single line, but I, I lifted my pen up so that it's not a straight line. So I'll show you here on my example. This might be something you want to test out on an example sheet of paper. So I'm going to start with my straight line, and then I'm going to pick it up, press down, pick it up, press down, pick, down, pick it up, press down. So I don't have a straight line. I have these spaces where it's not connected. That's exactly how I did this. I don't want to press the entire way. I do want to keep lifting it up. So I'm going to do that here, but first I want to make sure that the shadow is dry. The shadow is dry. So I'm going to start line out, pick it up slightly, and kind of dot it out. I do have this like arc here towards the top, if you can see that. Same thing, I'm gonna do another line, straight out, but kind of be picking it up. I don't want to be touching down the entire time. And a third line out, pick it up, press down. And I do wanna have like some of these connectors here. I might have a little loop that's going to arch the same way as this bottom arch here. And then last, I do want to outline the top of this wing. As I'm outlining, I am going to come around the edge, but I do want to stop about where this comes in. Okay, so once again, I'll show you down here. I, I am outlining, but then I'm stopping right about here. And it looks like I did outline a little bit at the bottom, so let's do that too. Outline just slightly at this bottom here. You can definitely see what looks best for you at home. Maybe you want to add more lines or more dots. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I think this time I'll start with outlining though. So I'll outline the top here. Come around and then stop. A slight outline on the bottom. Now I'm going to work on outlining the inside. Remember, I'm going to start with my line, pick up, press down, pick up, press down. I want to have about three lines in the center. Press, pick up. Press, pick up, press, pick up, press, pick up. Maybe I want a little arch here. Press, pick up, press, pick up. A little arch down. The nice thing about bees is that you can have all these random lines in the center and it still looks good. It still looks like a bee. Let me show you one more time so that you can reference the, the lines. Now, it doesn't have to be the exact same lines as you see here. We have some of these lines that are dipping down, some that are dipping up.
And that is it. That's all to this bee. Now you notice that my bees don't look exactly the same. This one's a little chubbier. It looks like it's, it's eaten a little bit more. This one's a little bit skinnier. That tends to happen as you're painting. I do want to let this completely dry. And when it's completely dry, I'm going to come back in with my kneaded eraser and erase some of these outlines here and erase my lines for I believe in myself. But that is the general um, idea for as you're painting. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, these are Mantra Monday free Instagram live tutorials. The whole purpose here, the goal here is to have you create something that hopefully you can put somewhere in your office, somewhere in your home, and to constantly refer back to it and to say these, read these mantras to yourself every day. Um, and the goal is to just help you feel better because art helped me feel better through the pandemic. And so it's something that I'm hoping to share to other people. Next week, Monday, um, I'm going to try my best to still offer Mantra Monday next week, but I will be in Mexico. Um, so I'm almost positive I will have internet, but just in case I do not have internet, I will message and let everybody know. But this will be the mantra for next week. If you can join us same time, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. And this is a Monstera plant. And the mantra is, I don't need to be perfect. My flaws are beautiful too. So we are going to be looking at somewhat of how to purposefully make mistakes, if you will, in watercolor. And these blooms is by dropping water onto the leaves. But there is still, even though it can be considered a mistake by some watercolor artists, I, there are other artists who see it and they think it's beautiful. And actually, some of these Monstera plants, the variegated versions that have the splotches on the leaves, it's because of a genetic mutation that the plant has. And even though it's a genetic mutation, there are people who pay a lot more money for that genetic mutation because it looks so beautiful. So you don't need to be perfect because your flaws can make you beautiful too. So that'll be for next week. Um, I hope you enjoyed the class. Please message me. Let me know if you also did it. Send me pictures. I love to share your versions on my Instagram and I hope to see you next week. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please follow me on social media, check out my website, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.